We've been paused. <laughs> now we're recording. Oh well. So um, that show that was a good video showing some of the fundamentals. Um, when we're, we're talking about the spin passes, particularly for Americans, the way they want to spin pass, and I'm sure you've seen it, is actually push the ball away from them. Push it like this as opposed to I'll slide it across the table. Um, so some of our techniques, obviously, um, I just thought this was a cool little poster. Um, Look at the receiver. Just don't pass the ball blindly. How many times have you passed the ball blindly or have tried to catch a ball that um, your teammate assumed that you would be there? Probably a lot for both, right? Eh. Yeah. Uh, aim the pass uh, at the chest level, which is good. Actually, what you, what you want to do is aim the pass towards your teammate's hands or a little beyond the hands so that when the ball is going there, and you're running forward, you'll intersect together. Um, what's the problem with passing the ball to someone's body? It's behind them. It'll end up behind them. That is certainly true. Around and slightly forward of the receiver. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Time to pass. That's always going to be an issue, especially with the new technique of the back lines that we're using, where we're, instead of having a echelon, we're going to start from a flat line. Timing becomes more important because you can't make it up by being faster or slower. You just have to do it. You have to time it right because you just don't have enough um, distance. And then draw the defender in. Well, yes. And why would you want to draw the defender in? Yeah, so that he can't tackle the guy you passed to. Exactly. One of the things I noticed uh, on this particular video I'm not seeing as much as uh, I like to, but uh, old school is once you pass the ball, you are running towards the direction the ball was passed. Why would you do that? So you can support the rock. So you can support support the rock, support the player. Yes. Or actually, uh, if you're going in that position and there's a space, you can actually do um, you know you can uh, go behind them, call for the ball, you know, just a quick yeah, yeah. quick pass. Uh, die pass. At our level, I've almost never seen, even scrum halves, you don't really see a dive pass. The problem with the dive pass is that then you're on the ground, you have to get back up. That's a physically tiring thing. And for someone like me who just, even when I was younger and fitter, just didn't like getting up off the ground. So when I did a, a dive pass, the one time I tried it, it took me like a half hour to get back on my feet, so I didn't do it anymore. Um, My old team, we had we had a really we had a short um, scrum half. Yeah, and I think I think he used the dive pass a lot. Well, the the the, the advantage of the scrum uh, of using the dive pass is that you can gain three to four feet of uh, of distance to get the ball back. So I I do my dive pass. And if I'm standing right here and I pass, the ball is in the air and it's already yeah, yeah. It's already losing power. But if you do a dive pass, their body's movement carries the ball and then you're thrusting forward so you're able to give it you know, that much more power so your distance, the actual distance from the base of the scrum to wherever you're passing, uh, the actual distance the ball is in the air is lessened and that makes it going faster. How to catch well, we'll do that. Okay, um, one thing that I love is dummy passes. Do you like dummy passes? I typically don't use them, but. Ah, wow. I will tell I, you I, nothing. I could is, get better at it. Uh, dummy passes are great because they don't expect forwards particularly to use them. Yeah. Um, I have used them to great benefit. Uh, many times when I was younger, because they expect I'm a I'm a prop. They expect me to take the ball and just run right into them and run right over you. But they certainly don't expect a pass. So if I start to move my rotate my body and I do the fake pass, the dummy pass, nobody, no one's ever said, "Oh, he is not passing the ball." They've always followed it, and I've always had that gap. 
Now, I haven't been mm -hmm. as fast as I should to always capitalize on that gap, but it's there. So it's a good technique. So here's some uh, dummy passes just for grins because, well, everybody loves a good dummy pass. So what did you think of those? Um, what did you think of those um, dummies? It's, it's, it's a great way to get space. Like, when, if I ever do one, I typically do it, like, out of the ruck. Mm -hmm. But it's just a good way to get space. Oh, so it, it is. But you have to sell it. Yeah, yeah. You have to sell. So it has to, it has to look realistic. But you just can't go. And I've seen people think this was a dummy. They pass it around like this and they do this. <laughs> you actually got to make it, you know, get in a position, bring it, and almost as far out as for the pass, keep your hands on it and then bring it back in. Now, that's a good dummy. But if you can't sell it, you've just wasted time and effort. So as yeah. you're running, again, one of the reasons why we, we train you to run, especially if you're about to go into contact, two hands on the ball, because it is easier to fake it. Easier to fake it in whatever direction you want. So dummy passes are a good technique. The thing is, though, um, it, has to be, it has to be sold and it has to be bought by the opposition players. I think we need to focus a little more on dummy passing for the back line, um, hopefully. Uh, next year. Okay, so I kept trying to look for really good passing videos. Kept coming up with, you know, the best passes in the world, and it, it was just really hard to see how that there'd be any training value into that. And then I found a whole series of worst passes. So we can talk about worst passes and why they are not real good. Uh, one of the videos has really horrible music, so I'm just going to have it. Uh, I'm just going to uh, mute uh, mute the video portion for that. Although if I mute it, it may prevent us from talking. Well, we'll find out. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so um, what are some of the problems you're seeing in the past is that we're seeing right now? I know it's kind of hard to see because it's kind of grainy and okay. the video feed, but they're just, I do see. Well, they're, they're consistent. <laughs> Because they're either too high or too low. Well, not only too high or too low, but where are, they, where are they aiming their point for the ball for their teammates? That was a Behind good them. example. They're not aiming the ball in front to the burst on the yeah. ball, but they're aiming the ball so that they either have to stop or actually go backwards to get the ball. Of course, you actually have to assume that you have a teammate teammate there to get the ball yeah gotta look where you're passing yeah you do so as he goes down nice rock boom looking good looking good looking good and oh yeah i have a <laughs> how often do you see two bad passes in one back line especially one pass that's at the knees and the other half passes at the head Sometimes the backs just try to get a knock on, I feel like. Yeah. I don't think they're trying to get a knock on, but they certainly don't appreciate uh, the effort involved with having a scrum. Yeah. Or the fact that forwards actually run more than backs. Backs sprint more, uh, but forwards, you know, they've got to run forward, and then when the ball gets kicked, run back, run back and forth. So actually during the course of a game, a forward will generally run more than a back. Backs will run faster and more intensely, but forwards will always be moving. Yeah. All right, who are we going to throw it to? Who are we going to throw it to? Oh, oh. The other thing that you'll notice is the passes aren't uh, friendly. Well, oftentimes they're too hard for a teammate to, um, to catch. That was just a beautiful cherry pick.
Okay, this is one of the reasons you never let forwards pass from the base of a ruck or a mall. Um, I was actually um, at a military services championship met game. And the guy was like five, there was a ruck about five meters from the try zone. And this big slow forward comes up and decides he's going to play scrum half. So he goes up, reaches into the ruck, gets the ball out. And what would you expect that big five, big forward to do when he's only five meters from a try zone? Run. Pick, pick, pick and, and run. Especially since he was large enough that very few people would actually um, – would actually be able to stop him. Nope, he decided he was going to be a scrum half. And since he was going to be a scrum half, he got there, he picked up the ball, and he started looking for someone to pass. I was going, run, run. But nope, he wanted to make his pass. And very rarely, unless it's a flanker, do you often see um, – um, do you um, see – forwards actually acting as a scrum half, making useful uh, passes. It's one of the reasons why, um, particularly for forwards, we train you to pick and run. Yeah. Uh, pick and run, and once the ball is away from that mass, then you're going to look for the pass. But we want to get the ball out. We want to keep the ball going. Remember our, uh, our rules? Well, the first one is gain possession. The second one is to go forward. And so if you sit there and you know, pick up the ball and you know, wait to pass, you're not contributing to going forward. You're not contributing to ensuring continuity. So um, let's go over the um, five really bad things that seem to be consistent. What would you say was the first uh, bad, bad technique, common bad technique that we were seeing in this video. Yeah, passing behind them. Passing behind them. And how do we fix that? Just got, you have to realize that they're moving forward. So you have to pass in front of them so that they can meet the ball on time. Okay. Very good point. What would be another one? Uh, hospital passes so like you go in you're going from down to up so it's just gonna shoot the ball in the air okay so um, why is a hospital pass bad for the guy catching it you're gonna break something you're gonna break the ribs or something well you're exposing you, your body you're, you're expo exposing your body when we go up right there oh yeah you're exposing the torso and you're right here my first rugby injury was actually bruised ribs, and that was my third game. Um, not a fun experience. So lifting up like this, saying, yeah, I can catch the ball, and then get wrapped right here, not a fun feeling. Not a fun feeling. Okay, so we got hospital passes. we got hat passes going backwards. What else? Not looking where you're passing. Oh, very good one. Not looking. Well, let's get back to the hospital pass. How does a passer prevent from doing hospital passes? Uh, doing across the across the chest rather than going from your hip up to to the chest level. Perfect. Outstanding. That was that was the perfect grade A four O response. Okay, so bump 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 bump. Not looking where you're go uh, Not looking where you're passing. Okay. What's the problem for uh, your support if you don't look to see where you're passing? They don't know that they're getting the ball. Or they don't know where the ball is going to go. Yeah. How does the passer fix the problem of not looking where he's passing? you got to make eye contact with the person you're passing to. Eye contact with the person you're uh, – how do you communicate? I mean – I'm getting ready. I look, I see you. We have eye contact, but what else may I do to indicate that, yes, I'm about to pass to you? Step towards them. Step towards them, but uh, how about just a simple nod? Okay. You go, yep, yeah, and you go, give me the quick nod. No, it doesn't have to be big or blatant. We both know that I am a pass to you. 
Okay. Now, how? What is the technique that we use on our team for um, knowing when to pass the ball? I'm the ball carrier. I'm running up the field as fast as I can run, and I have a support player. How do I know that the support player wants the ball? What is the technique we use on our team? You say ball now. Okay. Why do we say ball now? A lot of teams go ball, 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 and clap their hands and make mooing now noise and stuff. Why is it important to go ball now? I don't know. Well, think about this. You've been in a position many times. You yell ball, ball, ball. And as you're running, yelling ball, 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 what have you done to, in terms of letting the ball carrier uh, have situational awareness? I'm yelling ball, ball, ball. What does that tell my ball carrier? What are some of the things it tells them? You have support. I have support, good. And they're ready to receive the ball. And they're ready to receive, but it also tells my ball carrier where I am. Yeah. So if I'm going ball, 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 you know, he knows, ah, okay, he's, he's behind me to the left close. So even as he gets ready, he, he knows that when he starts to make his pass, where to look. The important thing about ball now is as I am running and I have an opposition player, we don't know what the opposition player is going to do. So they may stop and I now have a good pass and then go into contact or however we want to do it. Or we go forward and we go beyond the opposition player. And as soon as I'm beyond the opposition player, I want the ball. So on the mm of ball now is when the ball should leave my hands because it, it means instantaneously give me the ball now so that I can do something with it. And as we become better, uh, better rugby players, that becomes more important. All right, so let's see. Uh, okay, behind hospital pass is not looking. What's another one? Passes are too low. Too low, exactly. Well, now, what's the problem with passes being too low? You have to know how far you can pass. You can't just try and make a pass across the field if you can't. Okay, do well, it. I'm, I'm, your, I'm your support, and you throw the ball at my knees. What's my problem with that? You have to bend down to catch it. You have to bend down to catch it. Am I going to do the, you know, the, the perfect textbook thing of bend at my knees, keep my back straight, and reach for the ball? Or am I going to bend over at my hips and sort of reach for it? The latter. Yes. What are the two problems with that? They're, it's dangerous. Cause you're, it's dangerous because I can get smushed, but if I'm bending over trying to catch the ball, what am I likely to do? And it's not catch. Fall. Drop it. Knock it on. Yeah. You are far more uh, far more likely to have a knock on than you are um, uh, than you are uh, catching the ball when it's slow. All right. What was it? What would be a last one, real quick? I think. Uh, I don't know. Passing. <laughs> Passing to a teammate. How many, oh, yeah. passes, how many of those passes were, I am, I'm about to be smushed and I don't want the ball in my hands because if I don't have the ball in my hands, he can't hit me. So I do this. Woohoo! Just <laughs> toss the ball up and hope that there's someone there, hope that they don't steal the ball. So that would be, I think, would be the fifth one. You know, make, pass it to a teammate. Don't panic pass and just get it get rid of it. Okay, so let's go. Let's watch these uh, atrocious um, tackles. And they're pretty much all the same same issues, aren't they? Yep, at the ground. Boom. Too high. Got the knock on.
pretty amazing that the same pass, uh, the same bad passes are using both of the videos, isn't it? They look like exactly the same, just a different music in the background. Mm. Yeah, let's um. Okay, let's um. We'll just uh, put these down. Okay. So, what are some of the things that you've, oh, I probably should get some of you to see my face. What are some of the things that you learned about passing today? Or reinforce what you already knew? Um, one thing is to look where you're going. I sometimes need to work on that, like work, look where you're passing, rather than just assuming that they're there. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I've seen that so many players watch New Zealand, and you know the guys running. You know they've been playing together as a team since they were five. And the guys yeah. just running, and all of a sudden he just does this, flips it right behind him, and someone will catch it. Someone's always there to catch it. So. Um, so it's always good to actually be able to look for and place the ball to where you need to, to put it. So what else? Um, uh, oh, just reinforcing the fact that you need to pass in front of the person okay. rather than behind them. Okay. What about timing? Do you think timing is a, a thing that we need to work on for our passing? Probably. Okay. So we got uh, we got about three minutes left of a uh, meeting today. Thank you very much for uh, showing up today. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is most of this is recorded. Some of the important stuff at the beginning is recorded because well, I forgot to turn on the record button. But we have this. People are people are looking at this, so we are providing some sort of education to someone. Um, next session, what would you like to see? We're, we're still in ball handling. Uh, focus a little more on catching. Um, yeah, public catching. Support the ball in the ruck, how to catch the ball, in, how to go into contact with the ball, uh, holding the ball and not lose it. What would be the next session for all? Probably catching and, and running with the ball. Like going catching the ball. So, um, looking at different techniques for catching the ball or just want to focus a little bit on fundamentals? Look at different techniques and then we can talk about fundamental, fundamentals too. Okay. All right. Um, I think a lot of good information was put out today and I thank you for being here today. Mm -hmm. And um, I will put out, a, I'll put out an email and let's, uh, let's have uh, as big as crowds as we did before. Okay. All right. Um, anything for me? Nope. Okay. Um, are you excited about the fact that, you know, if we go to phase three, you guys will be able to actually go up and toss the ball around a little? Yeah. It's getting kind of boring <laughs> sitting in my house. It has been kind of boring. I also work from my house, let me tell you. Mm, that was <laughs> Okay, so I'm uh, I'm going to shut down now. Um, I will see okay. you next Tuesday, and let's hope we get some more people. Okay. See you, coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.